Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be taking a closer look and review of the 2023 Chevy Colorado Trail Boss Edition. And uh, as you can see behind me, it is blue, which is my favorite color. And so I'm excited about that. But also, I'm really curious to see how it stacks up against the Tacoma because I really think this is Chevy pointing the gun right at Toyota. So with all that being said, let's get to it. All right, so here we are inside the Colorado, and uh, there's definitely some great things about this interior that we'll talk about, and some not so great stuff. Uh, so let's start with the good stuff first. So, one thing that I, from now on, just look for, because it's 2023, it's almost 2024, so we gotta start thinking this way. You get not one, but two really nice, great screens in front of you. I mean, the driver's, uh, the driver's screen is just, it's, it's a beautiful thing. The graphics are crisp and bright and just feels quality as well as the infotainment. And I typically find that a lot of car companies usually give one or the other the good screen and the other one is not so good. And it's typically the infotainment side. So they'll put a nice screen here, but in front of the driver, it'll be just something half-assed just to say that it's got two screens, but not here you actually get two matching screens and they're beautiful and they're just a pleasure to look at. So that's a good thing. Also, you do get Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, which, uh, you know, is pretty standard like these days and it is wireless, which I think is great. And side note on that, I've been driving this all week and my CarPlay has not disconnected on its own at all. It has been rock solid through playing music, phone calls, whatever. So that's a huge plus. Um, but future models of any GM product are actually not gonna have CarPlay or Android Auto anymore. They're building their own app out, which I'm still not sure why they're going that route considering it feels like everybody else has decided that's the standard, but they're gonna try and fight that battle. So good luck to them. Um, so those are the good things. Now let's talk about some stuff that's not so great and also what justifies the price <laughs> so the first thing i want you guys to take a listen what do all those three sounds got in common cheap plastic now i'm used to seeing cheap plastic on the dash and yes, doors do get cheap plastic as well, but usually the cheap plastics are towards the bottom. But I've never seen cheap plastic on the steering wheel. And that's so strange to me because this isn't a base truck, right? And so you would expect them to at least put a few dollars towards making it feel somewhat special on the inside, and they just haven't. This is like the worst steering wheel I've ever had to hold on to. And it's not because it's a bad looking steering wheel, it's just, it just feels like crap, it feels cheap. And I hate to say that, but that's just the truth. Now, could they leather wrap it? And would that solve everything? I mean, not everything, but it would help and make a huge difference. Um, you can also get that done on the aftermarket in case this is the vehicle for you. Just keep that in mind, but just something I, I noticed. So the other thing is the way this cabin is laid out, you know, you do have quite a lot of like storage compartments and cubbies, like, like 
you know, stuff like that. Um, place for your iPhone. You know, like there's a nice little phone charger here with both USB-C and B uh, sockets right next to each other, which is great. Um, you got little storage comp compartments here and here and here on the doors. I mean, that's all great. But here's the weird thing. This is the rival for the Tacoma, for sure. Third gen Tacoma, these are, you know, direct competitors. Probably the, the off-road version is probably the direct competitor. But I don't know why the Tacoma feels so much more spacious on the inside than this does. And that's a weird statement because that car gets, or that truck gets uh, criticized all the time for not being spacious. But here, this feels so cramped. It's a little crazy. I did not expect that. And it's not cramped just in the front. It's also cramped in the back. I don't recommend, if you carry around adults all the time, like you guys commute together or something, they're gonna hate being in the back. Just, just trust me on that. If you got little kids, it's passable, but just be aware. Now, that being said, I also think what is a little bit quirky and strange is that, again, the, the main touch points that you're touching all the time feel really cheap and not well thought out. But then they, they put a lot of nice rubber and really nice feeling switches and knobs on, this is for your mode selector for the different um, stages of traction control and stability control and stuff or wet and, and snow and whatever. Um, you got a really nice fan and temperature knob. The volume control is nice. I mean, those are nice. I'm like, well, why couldn't you just do a little bit more to make the interior feel up to par? That to me was a miss, but it is what it is. Other than that, you know, everything you want here, this makes for a really decent daily driver. And I think for most people, especially at this price point, they're gonna be relatively happy. So if you are watching this video, you're probably here for one or two good reasons. The first one is you either own this truck and just love consuming content about Colorado's, which I totally get that. You fan out, which is great, and like to geek out on stuff. I, I'm the exact same way. Or two, you're looking to buy this and you're considering it amongst other options and you want to see if it's worth checking out. Well, that's what we're going to do in this video. We're going to spend some time really understanding is the Trail Boss Edition Colorado worth your time, effort, and money? <laughs> uh, you know, this truck, it, it has a tendency with all of its safety warning systems to beep at you all the time. Um, even if you're not like in danger whatsoever or you have everything under control if it doesn't think that it's totally safe it will beep at you and the thing that's really annoying is it's kind of like saying you aren't a good driver and i uh don't trust you that's what the truck is basically saying to you we're almost out sorry sorry guys stop beeping If this thing thinks you're not paying attention, it just beeps like crazy. Really annoying. Because, you know, like that. I mean, I'm not even doing anything crazy. I'm just normally driving right now and it's gonna beep. So, yay. Gas tank's not that big, but I'm averaging right around 18 miles a gallon all week long, which considering it's a truck and considering you know, you don't have to think too much about it. Oh, there we go. It's beeping again because I'm, I'm driving. <laughs> because I'm driving. <laughs> so right now it is after 6 p.m. here in California and I'm looking at my gauge here and it says it's 92 degrees Fahrenheit. So that is a pretty warm day for us. So for sure, um, you know, this truck is working hard today because, you know, not only is it in the sun, but it's also sucking that really, really hot air. And remember, this is a 2.7 liter turbo. So turbos in general don't like hot air, but you wouldn't know it by driving it that it even cares. I mean, re really, it, it feels just as good as it did a couple nights ago when I drove it and it was relatively cooler um, than it does right now. And I think that's a really positive sign that 
the engineering behind these motors is you know pretty well tried and true and researched and, and and tested and will deliver the kind of power that you want when you need it and for me coming at coming from a tacoma where everybody and their mom who's ever owned a tacoma driven a tacoma will complain about one of two things or both the motors are not powerful and the transmissions always hunt for gears and yeah those things are true which is partially why i supercharged my truck but even that happening even putting a supercharger on my 3.5 liter v6 this truck is much faster much faster of course it's much lighter but this has so much power i mean even out of the box than my truck does it's really um it's really kind of eye-opening now power aside What's really cool about this truck and, and an eye opener is how it actually handles. When I'm driving, and I, I don't know if you guys can tell, but I'm on a pretty windy country road right now and it's starting to get windier. This truck does a pretty good job of maintaining composure. I mean, it, it, it's not afraid of taking a corner. And keep in mind, this is the Trail Boss Edition, so that even means it has the off-roady tires on it which are really just all seasons but they um they do have some uh some knobbiness to them but they handle pretty well and these tires don't make really any noise um which is kind of surprising i mean i guess it's a well-engineered uh street knobby tire um but here i am going around these corners and i keep thinking to myself you know why is this truck handling so well well I have a theory. If you look at the front of this truck with the hood up, you will notice that the engine sits pretty far in to the, uh, the hood area, right? Like the under hood area. Basically, the engine is behind the front axle or straight over it. Depends on where the most weight is, I don't know, but if you count the transmission and front diff, uh, my guess is is mostly right over the front axle. Now, why is that great? Well, it means that the truck itself, it has all the weight over the right places, making it handle really well, because unlike other vehicles, especially pickup trucks, when you go around corners, they tend to fall apart, which is why they make drivers go really, really slow. But in this thing, no, not at all. I mean, you can really fling this truck, especially if you don't have any weight in it, like a full load in the back or whatever, you can really move. And the truck will just be compliant and handle the corners. Now, all that being said, <laughs> sorry, all that being said, there is one gripe I have with the handling. And you might even be able to see that on camera too, which is I feel a lot of undulations in the suspension itself. Um, and that's because this Trail Boss Edition comes with different suspension, right? So it does have a lift. But it's really weird because it feels like the lift works against it because this is very highly sprung uh, to my feel. And uh, over this road today, I am bouncing around like you can't believe. And, you know, look, I mean, yes, I'm, I, I'm probably driving faster in a truck that most people are not going to drive but i have found this bounciness to be kind of present even if you're not driving fast so it's just kind of the character of the truck so unless you really really like the trail boss edition for the lift you might want to consider looking at the other options in terms of trim levels and everything for the colorado but um, it does look good but the, the price you're paying is it's not very comfortable. Now that the road is smoothened out, I get to try this. Went to a complete stop. And actually, that was a pretty hard stop. Um, and that's a good thing because one really great characteristic of the driving dynamics of this truck are the brakes they stop really, really well, all this weight. And not just that, but like, I find the bite feel is consistent. Like, 
no matter what I drive it like or how many how much weight I have in the vehicle like the bite's really good and the pads themselves seem to be stopping the truck in a really really consistent fashion which is great because that's another gripe I have with my third gen Tacoma which is I don't have four-wheel disc brakes I only have the front discs and so if you need to stop you know in an emergency situation yeah I mean it, it stops okay um, but it doesn't stop nearly as good as this Colorado so you know you might want to consider that especially if you live in a place where I don't know you're on a mountain road like this and deer are prone to jump in front of you so a couple of months back when I uh, did the review on the Silverado Trail Boss you know, I really liked that vehicle, but not for the reasons that the trim suggested. Because to me, it didn't feel like an off-road vehicle. It felt more like a luxury truck with knobby tires on it. Um, but this truck is, I mean, I've got a few other problems with it, but like overall, it feels like a much more well thought out package for what it's trying to be. This is a small truck that'll fit in any trail if you're going off-roading. Um, it is lifted a little bit, uh, which is enough to feel, you know, like you can definitely do fire roads and, you know, probably some small obstacles and be fine. If you're going to get into, you know, real off-roading, not just overlanding or whatever, you're going to want to swap out the suspension and go something like King Shocks or um, Fox or whatever. Uh, and and you'll want to like really think about clearance and stuff because you know I mean like these tires though they're knobby they're you know it doesn't doesn't actually raise the diff up you, you got to go much bigger tire but I think that this would be able to handle it pretty well especially with the torque from this turbo which is really welcomed um, and I'd be willing to bet that though the transmission feels kind of sluggish and not very um, rewarding just to drive normally every day. I think if this was built out to be an off-roader with bigger tires and that kind of stuff, I actually think the transmission would probably be fine because it would be coping with that weight uh, in a more uh, direct fashion, which I think it's, it's almost like it was made to do that. So who knows? Maybe if you build, um, build out a Colorado, save some money from getting the Bison or something, the ZR2, you know, you might find yourself in a pretty capable truck that you really love, and I wouldn't, I wouldn't uh, judge you for it at all. I mean, this is a great little truck, especially when you consider the price point. The entry price point on this vehicle is so good for what you're actually getting. All right, well that concludes our drive and deep look at the Colorado. So what did I think about the Trail Boss in general? Well, I mean, honestly, from a looks perspective, I think it looks pretty damn good. And this is stock out of the box. I think with some aftermarket suspension, 35 inch tires, I, I really think this would look really, really aggressive. Maybe some off-roading bumpers front and back. That would really like, like just finish off the look. And I think that's exactly what this truck needs to be a real Trail Boss. Now, the other thing I really liked about the Trail Boss was what's under the hood. I mean, the power delivery of this thing is really impressive. 310 horsepower, tons of torque, and actually one of the strangest experiences because, again, this is a 2.7 liter turbo. Listening to that turbo spool from a truck, it just is a little strange, and it's not a diesel. So, like, you know, to me, it took a little while to get used to, but really really cool sounds and i actually really enjoyed it um and you know at like zero to like 30 miles an hour i mean it's like a snap of the finger and you're there so this thing moves really really well the only thing that's a little bit of a letdown just a tiny bit would really be the transmission and that's only because well i just don't think it's tuned that well or perhaps the tuning is more situational for maybe just like being not on pavement uh, you know, something like that. Maybe it's a little bit better for those situations, but where it's going to be 99.5% of the time felt a little bit sluggish at times, especially freeway speed, stuff like that. So food for thought on that.
The Colorado Trail Boss does a really good job of being that one car garage solution. It touches on everything that you need in your daily life and it does it reasonably well. It really can be placed into city traffic or tight parking spots or windy mountain roads or what have you and do reasonably well. And the decent gas mileage suggests you can actually even go on road trips. So for all these reasons, what a great platform, what a great little truck. I think my issue with it though, is that it's really more of a jack of all trades and a master of none. And because the trim level suggests that it is a specialized tool for a particular scenario, I'm a little let down. But if you're gonna buy this truck because you love it and because this is the platform you wanna work on, if you are gonna be doing off-roading, adventure drives, that kind of stuff, just be prepared to put in about 10 to 20 grand to start. And at that price point, it really opens you up to other models and other trucks and really just a, a slew of other choices. So to keep that all in mind. But again, this little truck, it's a pretty good little truck. And honestly, I, I really enjoyed my time with it. With all that being said, guys, if you've been watching this point, thanks so much. If you've got any questions, put them down below. And as always, I'll catch you on the next one.